Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so happy to have you here. We are gonna dive right in with your reading today. We are doing a you and them um, reading today. So we're gonna look at the masculine and feminine energies. If you don't have anyone in particular on your mind or in your energy, you can also kind of view this sometimes as your masculine and feminine sides and gain some insight into how to kind of bring those into balance. All right, we're gonna dive right in. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. I am very happy to have you here. These are general readings, so take what resonates and leave the rest, all right? Here we go. For my Pisces, please, Spirit, what does Pisces need to know? Can you please show me the energy of the masculine? Of the masculine. All right, we're getting two. Wow, we're getting chameleon and panther. Interesting. Interesting. And for the feminine, for the feminine energy, wow, and three fours, I just noticed as I'm shuffling for the feminine. Um, okay. Okay. Um, with this masculine energy, I get the energy of someone who it's like, it's not the true meaning of this chameleon spirit card. The, the true meaning of this chameleon spirit card is acting as if it's already yours, acting as if you already have it kind of. And what I'm getting here is like someone who really um, was, it, it almost feels like the primary goal or like the way they were living their life was to really sort of blend in or to fit in. It wasn't, they weren't really like, let me exert myself. Let me, um, I, I hesitate to clarify it beyond that because it's like, I kind of want to say, let me, you know, stand out or let me, you know, really be my own person or let me express myself here in a lot of ways. It's kind of like somebody who's, I feel like they're going along with the routine. It's like they sort of know what's expected of them. They know how sort of like not to really rock the boat. Um, they may have like a group of friends and they don't, ha they don't, um, you know, even if they know that their friend is being ridiculous or is being whatever they're not one to rock the boat and to stand up and say dude you're being ridiculous you know they know how to sort of like laugh it off and like whatever it's this kind of energy and um and with the panther spirit it feels like this person is going through some type of transformation or change where they're sort of individuating uh, apart from the group so this could be like it doesn't have to just be a group of friends it can be, um, you know, society in general, it can be their family, it can be whatever, but it just, it feels like an energy of somebody who is like, you know, sort of trying, it's like, it's giving me an energy of like trying to stay anonymous or trying to just fit in, trying to blend in, trying not to stand out. And there's almost this energy of, you know, um, transition or change into someone who's like, you know, enough of that, or, you know, it's like they're finding their voice, they're finding their power, and they're understanding now the need for them to use it, or they're having, they're being called, or almost guided, like, even through desire to sort of reclaim their power, or to, like, stand up and be who they always could have been, and maybe who they always were, but they just didn't let other people see it. It may even be Pisces, like I'm getting this energy of like, they may have let you see it, but they didn't really have the confidence in themselves or they didn't have, it's like, I don't, I, it does, like for some people it may have been a confidence issue, but for other people it may have just been like, they weren't in touch with it or um, they didn't really think about doing it, <laughs> you know, I don't know. But it's like you may have seen a side of this person that they didn't let other people see. 
and it may have strengthened it and it may have made it feel more important to this person to sort of stand up for themselves or to sort of reclaim their power. It can also be that you are someone who's very free spirited and is not afraid to be an individual. And that may have also like just inspired this person. You may have inspired this person just by the way that you live to be their own person as well. The feminine energy, um, and this can be you, like we can be talking about a masculine spirit who's like, you know, going along with the flow and who's like suddenly like, you know, I, I, I want more than this for my life. And the only way for me to get more than this for my life is to step into my authenticity and be my true self. That's how we get more from life. Um, so then the feminine energy is getting this hummingbird spirit, be here now and fox spirit, think on your feet. This is, this feels very Piscean, um, because it, it feels for me, this is an energy of being really in tune with your intuition. And this message has been coming up now for weeks, I feel like where it's like you're going through some kind of period of transition or you may even have different things kind of coming at you a little bit. It does not feel like anything is super negative or anything is super like, oh, you need to watch out for this. But it just feels like you have to be fully present in the moment and have, you know, kind of all of your faculties, including your intuition available to you. And so in order to, it, the best way to really have access to the, the full array of your powers, you know, is to be fully present in the moment. And, um, because it feels like you may be always when you see a fox, there is this little bit of, you know, someone could be deceiving you. Something could not be exactly the way that it seems like it is. Um, it's, you know, I don't see the fox like raising their voice, but I just see the fox observing and seeing things for the way they are. And that may be what this is about here right now. Um, but you're going to have to respond or you're going to have to play some kind of part or some kind of role. And you just want to be fully present in the moment so that you can sort of see those things, respond to those things and react to those things. On the bottom of the deck, which I feel like is the energy of the bigger picture, I mean, of the relationship or the connection itself, it says, see the big picture. So, um, you know, it, it feels like, you know, it's like if I'm just looking at the chapter of a book or if I'm looking at the whole book, like that's what I'm getting. It's kind of like, or maybe even seeing where the chapter of the book fits into the greater book. I don't know. Just take it for how it is. Uh -huh. Somebody is having a big realization. Okay, you know, there's something here about this energy of, you know, going with the flow, sort of like with the people around you, like not, um, not rocking the boat, you know, sort of just fitting in and just sort of going along with what other people are saying. I really want to clarify this card. Um, I'm just being really guided to this person is, ha has had some kind of realization about how toxic that is or how it has possibly led to regret for this person. What is realization? What is realization? Hmm. Oh my. All right. Um, so, th so this person has had a realization. So I'm clarifying realization and you're getting the three of cups to the six of swords, to the queen of wands, to the empress with the high priestess on the bottom of the deck. So, you know, this can be a Piscean masculine, um, or this can be, you know, a masculine that a Pisces female is dealing with. However it is, there is this, you know, with the three of cups, this is like going along with the flow. This is like having fun and focusing on that and not being serious, you know, or 
um, sort of allowing, you know, the, the, the energy of the whole to be more important than the energy of the individual. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, um, and with the six of swords, this is a transition mentally from a place of kind of like chaos to a place of peace. When, um, see, I see this person having a realization about what is toxic about this. For some of you, this masculine, it's like they may, may really enjoy or they may have had a life that was sort of based around a friend group where they were going out a lot. Or this can even be, you know, like their family and prioritizing the family and the group of the family over their own individual wants and desires. This can also be, you know, society and what's expected of us and how we're supposed to be and what it's supposed to look like and, you know, the shoulds of life. Um, and for others of you, this can be... Um, a third party situation where someone doesn't, it is like they, maybe they've been with someone for so long or maybe, you know, but it, there's the point is with the three of cups and toxic, there's something not healthy about this. For some people, it may be an overindulgence in alcohol, but it doesn't just have to be that, but it definitely can be. Um, with the queen of wands and the emperor, it's like, I mean, in the Empress, I'm sorry, it, with this person, it's like they may have seen this feminine as just an object of desire or, an, um, you know, like an attractive female or someone that there was some kind of physical chemistry with. They may have even tried to just sort of convince themselves that that's what it is. But I feel very much like what they realized or what they found was like someone very special who could not be replaced who you know this this time spent partying or this time spent however it is whatever this group is whatever this third party situation is it could not be it doesn't hold a candle to what this feminine was offering this masculine when you can be in someone's presence and be 100 percent yourself that is love. That is freedom. That is the freedom to be yourself and to know that it is okay. You know, you're not going to offend someone. They're not going to use it against you. They're, you know what I mean? Like you're safe in this energy. And so there is this masculine energy is having a realization around the choices that they have made and how they make them feel. And if you see that six of swords, it's kind of like, I have to move away from this three of cups situation because that is what is causing the disturbance here. The, the side of peace rests here with this person that I thought was just an object of physical desire in some way and actually turns out to be a whole heck of a lot more than that. With the high priestess on the bottom of the deck, you know, Pisces, it's like I feel like they really, you're not talking to them or there is some secret that you're holding to yourself. Even if you are talking to them, you may not be expressing yourself the same way that you used to. You may be holding back or they may feel that you're holding back. Um, but they also see it as a sense of having a standard and having, um, you know, not, you know, being true to your highest and best self and knowing that this situation is not in your best interest, you know, if you're the feminine in this case. All right. And put yourself where you belong. Just because I'm calling this the masculine and this the feminine, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, listen to your own intuition and allow yourself to be guided that way. All right. So this person is trying to figure out how to integrate this realization that they're having with their real life. And beyond that, this person, they're seeing signs and synchronicities. You have this signs card here that is really pointing them in a very solid direction. I mean, they're they're getting it. They're hearing it. They're seeing it. With this outsider on the bottom of the deck, I do feel some kind of fear on this person's part of being sort of locked out of whatever this group or this third party situation is or you know, not having access to it anymore or not being, you know, an insider anymore because they're rocking the boat by really stepping out and individuating themselves. Um, so let's look at this feminine energy.
for the feminine, for Pisces, please, Spirit. For the feminine, for Pisces, please, Spirit. Wow. Okay, so we have a little bit of a confused energy over here on the feminine's part. It's on the bottom of the deck, so there's almost this energy of, um, of confusion is sort of a lower vibrational energy in and of itself. And the more we say, I'm confused, you know, that's a powerful statement that calls more of the same into our lives. So it's sort of a compounding energy. And really, the only way to stop being confused is to make the decision to let go of all of those thoughts and all of that thinking and just sort of clear your mind and let the answer come to you. Um, because confusion only compounds upon itself. We as human beings have a heavy reliance on our mind. And so when something happens, anything happens, we tend to say, okay, well, let me think about it. You know what I mean? Well, uh, let me run that through my, you know, brain over here and, you know, see what it tells me. And when something is not clear, when something is not cut and dry, or when, you know, our thoughts conflict with our feelings or our intuition, um, then those things tend to lead to confusion. They tend to lead to misalignment and they tend to lower our vibration. And so, you know, I feel like this feminine felt a strong sense of connection to this masculine on multiple levels. Um, for a lot of you, I do think there was a physical connection, but at the very least, there is this, I feel like a soul connection. I feel like this feminine is, for the most part, a pretty individual person. I feel like, you know, she's not afraid to sort of... Um, own her thoughts, her opinions, her feelings. Um, I feel like it has been something that has panned out for her. You know, I feel like she is probably sort of a solid thinker here, you know, um, or, you know, somebody who typically has a plan in place and is making that happen for themselves. Um, sometimes that can take us out of the present moment. Sometimes that can plop us solidly in the future and increase our anxiety and take us away from our intuition. Uh, but I feel like, you know, the feminine is working to try to be in the present moment. I feel this feminine, in order to let go of this confusion and keep her vibrations high, she surrendered it to the universe with trust and love. You know, she knows that she feels love. She knows that she feels a bond and a connection with this masculine. And there's sort of this energy of just, okay, I've done everything I can do. Thinking about it isn't helping me. I'm drained. I feel like my vibration is lowering. I want to be my highest vibrational self, especially if this person comes back. So um, I have to sort of ditch this energy. And this feminine feels like the type of person who has pretty good self-control, you know, and does make things happen for herself, you know. She may have stayed in I'm so confused land for a while, but the moment she really realized the cost, what it was costing her, you know, she kicked it to the curb. So, you know, this is a pretty solid female, you know, or feminine energy here. It's kind of like, I, you know, I recognize, once I recognize the toll this is taking on me, I, I am like, nope, not going to let that happen. So um, I feel like the choice that this feminine made was to just surrender it to the universe and trust that if it's meant to be, it will come back around and to trust in, you know, the love that she felt for this masculine. All right. So, and actually, before I dive into the tarot, let me just get a look at the type of connection this is between this masculine and feminine place spirit what can you tell me about this connection mm -hmm. there is a strong physical aspect of this relationship i feel like if if there hasn't already been some kind of um physical relationship i feel like uh there's a very strong attraction um and it does feel like a soul, definitely a soul level connection. You have telepathy on the bottom of the deck. This connection has a strong empathetic and telepathic soul bond. You have attract. Yeah. 
set your intentions high and know you deserve to receive love and happiness. A lot of times when things don't make sense or when you can't figure them out or when they're out of your control and it's up to another person to make free will choices that support the connection, the best thing you can do is focus on your own vibration and on your own sense of self and your own, you know, knowing that you do deserve love and happiness and um, allow it to come to you. Um, just become the magnet for it. Um, then you have lessons of Jupiter, align, demonstrate, and express values and beliefs you have learned about love. Be open to new ways. The results are healing and expansion. And then you have lessons of Saturn, a soul's desire to resolve limiting patterns of control and dependency. Many challenges, but can bring benevolent long-term rewards. Um... Yeah, so I feel like this connection, it has a lot of opportunity in it with Jupiter and Saturn. Um, you know, there is an opportunity to go deeper and to expand further than we have in another relationship. And with Saturn, it is to, you know, move beyond those things that have typically or in the past limited us um, or been served as a limiting factor for us. So, um so there are a lot of opportunities associated with this connection and the lessons that can be learned here from it. All right, let's get a look at this masculine's um, mental body. What is the masculine thinking? Please, spirit. All right. Dang, two of cups on the bottom of the deck, seven of pentacles in reverse, five of rods in reverse. And you have something here. Eight of wands upright. So there is, this person is definitely very focused on the fact that this was some kind of mutually beneficial relationship or that they were getting something healthy and wholesome and healing from this relationship. This person, you know, with the seven of pentacles in reverse and the five of wands in reverse, th there is it's almost like at one point they may have accepted or they may have just kind of told themselves, you know, there are some obstacles between us right now in divine timing. If it's meant to be, they will go away and things will happen. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But I think with this two of cups on the bottom of the deck, you know, it's not like we come across the two of cups every day. Um, it's not even like we come across the two of cups every year. It's not even like we come across the two of cups every five years. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and especially with this masculine, because I feel like this masculine doesn't or hasn't particularly lived in their authenticity all the time. I feel like it may not have even been until they got with this feminine that they really found their authenticity, found their truth, you know, and started living it and expressing it. I think they got to know themselves a lot better through this connection or through this relationship. And so there's something here where it's like, this isn't the type of relationship that you can, um, you know, put that, allow that kind of distance to build and grow between you and this relationship because you're putting it in jeopardy. You're putting it in peril. You're not treating it as what it actually is. You know, this soulmate connection, you're just saying, okay, well, whatever will be, will be. Que sera, sera. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, 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 no. Like... <laughs> When you come across a relationship like this, you work through things. You you see it through to success, to its highest potentiality. You don't let other things interfere. You don't say, okay, well, when the time is right or, you know, when I no longer feel the need to, like, hang out with these friends all the time or, you know, when, you know, my family eventually loosens its grip and gets distracted by something else or... When, you know what I mean? It's like you you say, no, the time is now. And the time is now for me to look at the obstacles that are in the way and to remove them. Um, and with the eight of wands here, this is like, I, there's a heavy focus mentally on wanting to communicate, wanting to find success through some type of back and forth exchange of words here. Um, and there is a desire to move forward and, without obstacle and to remove anything that might stand in the way of it. What is in the heart space? 
This is where the problem exists, you know, I feel like with this person in their heart space. So, you know how when you have a group that you belong to, especially with the Five of Pentacles and the Seven of Swords, it's like if you feel any kind of scarcity mindset is going to take us out of alignment. It just is. Um, because it's not in alignment with the abundance of the universe. It's not in alignment with what we want. It's in alignment with our fears. It's in alignment with, you know, our doubts. It's in alignment with our lower vibrational energies. We have to become the energy, the frequency in every sense of the word um, to have the best and the highest that's available for us. We have to be that frequency. And when you're walking around with the five of pentacles in your heart space, it puts you out of alignment. It just does because there's a fear of abandonment. There's a fear of being alone. There's a fear that is saying, okay, this is why I have to hold on to whatever this is, whether it's a third party situation, like literally another relationship, or whether it's, you know, a friend group, a family group, um, whatever it is, it's like there is a fear in releasing it. There's a fear in letting it go because there's a fear in being alone. There's a fear in having no one. When you get over the fear of not having anyone, you can, you find infinite power within yourself. That's how I feel. That's been my experience. Um, with the Four of Swords in reverse, there is something here where this person has had some suffering and it, it may even be suffering at the hands of this group that they're afraid to let go of. And they, in order to, you can't heal in the same place that hurts you. So if you are staying in this environment and you're staying in this group, whatever the cause may be, right? You aren't giving yourself the space to heal. You're not giving yourself the space to figure out how you feel and what you think and to, you know, release what needs to be released and, you know, heal what needs to be healed because you're in constant contact with the things that wounded you in the first place. You feel what I'm saying? And so there's something here with this person where there's a conflict in their heart space of, you know, it's like having some people, even if they're not healthy, is better than being by themselves. And this is coming from a space that is an unhealed wound that could be where they have been abandoned. I mean, this may even be the same people that abandoned them, you know? So, um, so there's some kind of sense of security or stability that's tied up to whatever this is. I think it's false, right? Because the four of swords is in reverse and the five of pentacles is upright and we have the seven of swords on the bottom of the deck. I think it's safe to say that this feeling or this, it, it feels like an insecurity in the heart space is what is causing the misalignment for this person. Now we see the Six of Swords, it's sort of a champion card here, but it is swords and it is in the heart space. And it's kind of telling me that the heart is sort of naturally trying to align with the head space. Like, how do I even want to say this? It's like, it's almost like the heart is contributing to the head space. It's almost like, you know, the heart feels a sense of harmony or a sense of balance with this knowing that this is a soulmate connection and that this is a rare connection. And there is a musing in the heart of, of 
kind of wanting to move away from this energy of holding on to people that aren't necessarily healthy for us because we don't want to be alone, especially when it's costing us the one person that we can be ourselves in front of and with and feel a sense of love and harmony with. Um, and so there is this effort in the heart space that is happening to release this, which is coming from a space of fear um, and wounding, an unhealed wound, right, from the heart space. Um, and there is a sense with all of these swords and with the energy of the mental body that it there like the the heart is trying to sync up with the the mind or the heart the heart even knows what that the mind is sort of seeing something better but but it also is taking into consideration the fact that the heart may be easily triggered when we have unhealed wounds the heart is easily triggered and then it doesn't matter, you know, because our we literally have this instinct to move away from anything that feels like suffering. And so for this person, because they're, they have such a strong fear of abandonment, I think it's a fear of abandonment in their heart space, the, the safety and the security of what they already know or what they have, or, you know, it, it it's, it's very, very difficult to let go of. But with that Six of Swords, there is a deep desire in the heart to move away from it. There's a deep knowing in the heart that that's not the way to be or that that's not serving their highest and best and that it's not in harmony with what it is they really know and what they really want and what they really see and what, you know, um, it's just there is a need in the heart that comes from an unhealed wound and from a fear that is sort of the driving force behind this misalignment. So what is this person's intentions with this feminine? Wow. Wow. You have the star, the sun, the chariot, the hanged man, and the seven of cups in reverse. So you, you have this energy of um, this person wants they too want to free themselves from the confusion. They too want to free themselves from the fear and the illusion. And with the hangman energy here, I feel like they're taking the right approach. Uh, it's almost like, you know, um, they, in order to free themselves of the fear and illusion, this person rightly understands that they have to look to the past and they have to get um, an understanding of what is causing it, where it's coming from. And they need to get a new perspective on it. They need to be able to, I feel like, see it differently or feel differently about it in order to free their heart of this fear that is driving them to stay in a space that isn't necessarily healthy for them. You you see this realization. This realization card feels incredibly strong here that's why i clarified it and you know we did get a lot of these same cards the three of cups the six of swords um when we clarified it right and so there is a consistency here where it's almost like the mind is seeing something and almost trying to tell the heart you know which is not all that common in this kind of type of a reading or this type of a situation where it's like the mind is saying this is what is good for you this is what you want this is what you've been looking for you know this is something healthy this is something you can trust this is something you can be yourself with and the heart is saying but i don't want to give up what i have to give up in order to go in that direction because that feels safe to me that feels like something that has been around long enough that it's not going to abandon me or you know um it, there's some something there that makes this person feel like that is their protection from abandonment so this person though is realizing that that does come from it is creating a confusion within them and a conflict within them and it is making them misaligned you know you had the seven of swords now you have the seven of cups and and on the bottom of the deck you have the seven of the chariot right so you have three sevens. There's definitely a spiritual lesson tied up into this. And with the star and the sun, there's a heavy emphasis on healing. So this person, 
you know, they are trying to, they are, they intend, their intention is to free themselves from this fear and this confusion and to heal and to see things clearly and to have, you know, a return of hope to op and optimism. When you're hopeful and you're optimistic, you're not clinging to something that isn't serving your highest and best, right? Because you know that letting it go frees you up for whatever is available out there that's even better. You know what I mean? Um, and with the chariot, this feels like emerging out of this spiritual lesson, rebalanced, recentered, regrounded, and ready to like yoke up and move toward the future successfully with another person. So, you know, and it's only, there's only room for two, you know what I mean? Um, and so, and the sun is an energy of a reconciliation of soulmates at times. So you have the, in the energy of the star and the sun, it's like multiply, 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 wish fulfillment, healing, clarity, hope, you know, all of those things. It's, it's a really intense energy. So in this person's intentions, they intend to make sweeping changes. They intend to you know, somehow guide themselves to a healthier, more successful standpoint and viewpoint. And with the chariot, it's like to emerge solidly from a space that I think they were afraid to be alone into, no, I I am, you know, large and in charge. And I am I'm more confident than ever that I'm moving in the right direction and I'm not afraid to go there alone. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a very, it's like in a very empowered energy. So what actions will this person take in the next few weeks? So many major arcana here, Pisces, my God. All right. So I feel like, you know, this person, it, you know, I don't know. I don't know that they're going to reach out in the next few weeks, but there is this energy. You now have temperance, the star and the sun in this person's energy, in their intentions and in their actions. I mean, this is pretty profound. Um, and there is a, a heavy emphasis on, you know, healing and regrounding and centering. And it is, it is an energy of individuating, right? Um, because you have this eight of pentacles, which is all about self mastery. And this is about, you know, having the confidence to move in your own direction and to have faith in yourself and your own ability to, you know, find the solution, find the answer to apply yourself to a situation and, you know, make it happen, you know, make the seed come bear fruit, make the, you know, build the thing and, and, you know, make it complete, um, it's it's an energy of you with you taking charge and mastering yourself and mastering the task at hand and what's in front of you. With the high priestess here, this person is really tapping into their intuition or they're trying to. They're trying to connect with something higher than themselves. They're trying to connect with something that can maybe settle the the conflict between the heart and the mental body, you know, our intuition, our highest and best self, that voice of reason, they are trying to tap into that. And, you know, honestly, there is almost an acknowledgement here of like, I have to heal and I have to put work and effort into being able to tap into that intuition. Um, with the Empress here, this person's focus is solidly on, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity or this is the one for me. And only I can put in the work to make this happen. All right. So let's look at the feminine. The mental body for the feminine, please. Man. So in the mental body of the feminine, we have the five to the six of swords with the um, six of pentacles on the bottom of the deck or the four, I'm sorry, the four of pentacles on the bottom of the deck. So there is a heavy emphasis here on, you know, like I said, we had that confused card on the bottom of the deck. And I definitely can feel that the feminine is like understanding that being confused 
or even continuing on a thought pattern that is sort of based on, I'm so confused, I don't know what to do, I don't know what step to take, I don't know how to view this, I don't know how to think about this. It, it's like compounding upon itself and there's this realization or this recognition that like, I don't wanna be in this energy, this energy is draining, it's not helping me, it's not serving me, I need to come to a place of peace and I need to figure that out. With the Four of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck, there is this energy of, um, you have like these two Pentacles here, and it feels, at first it felt like the Two of Pentacles when I saw the card. This going back and forth, you know, of, you know, not really knowing how to feel or what to think or, or sort of where to go or where to turn. And then it's, there's this kind of focus on, maintaining balance and you know standing firmly you know standing in your own spot you know having a firm connection with that grounded and centered energy um you know the more we get in our head the the more it takes us away from being grounded and centered um our head is a very airy energy and it's very changeable and it's very you know you can get lost in there right and when we stay firmly rooted in the the in our center in the ground um there is this energy wow because yeah underneath that is the ace of wands wow and the page of cups how beautiful yeah so um there is this energy of like i have i i it's like i it's not serving me i can't allow myself to just go on this journey of the mind all the time every day everywhere you know it's draining me it's not serving me it's actually in some ways it's defeating me and it's taking me out of the harmony that i was feeling you know with my highest level of vibration it, it makes me low it makes me tired it it exhausts me so there's this energy of like, I know I have to move away from that. And with the four of pentacles, it almost feels like, I don't want to say it's an energy of resistance or an energy of blocking or anything like that. Um, because it doesn't really feel like that to me. It, it, it feels to me like I have to do what I have to do to sort of balance the scales, to stop myself from going back and forth with this energy of, of thinking and sort of experiencing this draining energy, this self-defeat energy. And I have to focus on what I do have. I have to focus on what is important to me. And with the Ace of Wands and the Page of Cups, this is like, I have to focus on what I really want, what I truly desire for myself. And with the Page of Cups, I have to listen to that most, most authentic space within me, which is fiercely independent. I mean, you have boss and dominant here which is I know I'm more than capable and more than fine of being on my own. And so do I want to let someone come in and disrupt my balance in that way? Or do I want to maintain my own balance and be the pillar of consciousness in my own life, put it out into the universe, surrender it into the universe and say, I've done everything I can do. Please, you know, I'm, I'm trusting you to bring about change in this situation or to work it out exactly as it's meant to be or in the highest and best of all involved. You know what I mean? And then to let it go and to restore the balance and to restore this deep seated connection with my true authenticity and my grounded and centered self. Um, because it's like, this is one aspect of my life. It's not my entire life. And if it's the, if this one aspect of my life is throwing me out of balance, it's affecting all of the aspects of my life. So I have to be the pillar of consciousness in my own life. I have to focus on the greater picture of what I want. And I have to just surrender this in order to bring my mind to a place of peace and to say, you know what, every time it comes up, every time it seeks to drag me down, I just have to say, you know what, I surrendered it. There's nothing else I can do. Thinking about this is not going to help me. Thinking about it one more time is not going to bring about some kind of answer. All right, in the heart space for the feminine. The nine of cups. I got to focus on my own happiness. This, this obstacle, this situation is making this feminine feel unbalanced. I just, it's.
you know, I, 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 the, uh, you've got these two pages in the heart space, the page of pentacles and the page of swords. And so there is a sense with this feminine where this feminine is trying to look for the gift in the situation. The, our heart is seeking the gift in the situation, the breakthrough, the new knowledge, the spiritual lesson that is associated with this. And they are, they, they're acknowledging that there is some kind of blockage here, but that, that, and that they don't seem to be able to really come to a place of peace or they don't seem to really be able to find balance within it in their heart space. But they, but it's almost like they're recognizing the difficulty that their heart has been through, but they're, they're no, but they're equally, there is this energy of, but wherever there is this difficulty, there is this gift. And it's, it's like this feminine is really like either looking for the gift or is focused on the gift or has found the gift. And in that way, this feminine is maintaining a sense of emotional contentment on their own, you know, um, because they're, they're sort of balancing what feels imbalanced and blocked by un their understanding that there is a higher purpose or there can be a higher purpose or there is something here where they're going to end up with a spiritual gift or where they have already figured out what the spiritual gift is and that instead of focusing on this issue this problem this blockage this imbalance what they're choosing to focus on is the gift um and they may even be waiting for some kind of breakthrough to happen here or they may even be still praying or hoping for some kind of breakthrough here but you know it's kind of like you you know as one person in a situation of the heart which involves two people you can't balance it out yourself any more than that sometimes you know when when the other side you know if you're on a teeter-totter and there's no one showing up on the other side you can't balance it out you just have to acknowledge the imbalance and look for the gift in it you know um and so that is keeping this feminine in a space of pretty in general emotional contentment you see all these butterflies on these cups it, it's actually helping this feminine even to find a greater sense of emotional contentment or to even like have a deeper sense of appreciation. It's bringing about a transformation in this department for this feminine. It's making her stronger, it feels like, or, you know, um, stronger in her ability to maintain uh, the balance of emotional contentment on her own. This feminine has like no intention of like, you know, yeah. Oigaba. Okay, you have the five of cups in reverse, the five of pentacles in reverse, the page of cups in reverse, and the six of cups in reverse. The intention of this feminine is basically to keep herself out of a state of regret about what happened here and a, that she's trying to prevent herself from kind of letting her mind drift to the nostalgia or, you know, the what could have been or what should have been or how it was or the this is or the that. Um, I, you know, with the five of pentacles and the six of cups in reverse touching each other, there's even a sense of like possibly going to places that you had been with this person and making a different memory there or you know stopping yourself from associating it with that person i don't know that may be super specific but there's almost this sense of you know not wanting to even associate certain establishments or places like it at one point it was sweet to remember walking by somewhere where you had had dinner with someone and going oh that's where we had that dinner and sort of laughing about the conversation or whatever. And now it's like, no, I'm making a new memory there. I'm not associating that with that. I don't know. Take that as it resonates, whatever. Um, it's coming through very strong though. With the page of cups in reverse, you know, the heart wants what it wants and that's true. Um, but it feels very much like this feminine is sort of saying, you know, um, instead of focusing on how my heart wants this person, 
there's almost a sense of focusing on the reality of this person. And my heart does not want what my what it is receiving from this person at this time. And, you know, that goes back to being present in the moment with that hummingbird and that fox spirit. There's a heavy emphasis on not allowing ourselves to go into the past mentally or even emotionally and to just sort of stay in this present moment exactly as things are. And in exactly as things are right now, it, you, the feminine is not getting what she wants from this masculine or what she needs. There's an imbalance. And so there's this sense of, I will not, I will not keep telling myself the story that, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants and the heart wants this person. I will instead tell myself the story. This is where I am right now. And this is not what my heart wants. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, just like the brutal reality It is like, I feel the energy of like, you know, that, um, like throwing cold water in the face, the ice bath, whatever that challenge was, that's what I'm seeing. Um, the Facebook challenge or whatever. And because the Knight of Wands, it's like, I, the, what I, 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 this is the reality. Someone who comes in and goes out or someone who's unreliable or someone who, you know, I can't say if they desire me in this moment or they desire to fit in with some other group or, you know, their their fear of abandonment is so great that, that they, you know what I mean? It's like, that is not what I want in a person. Okay, so what actions this person is going to take? Man, you have the tower, you had the fates, which is the wheel of fortune and the eight of swords coming out sideways. And then you have the ace of cups coming out upright. I am going to take one on this tower, um, but I do see that, you know, this feminine is kind of insisting on change and um, it feels like she's doing everything she can. You know, she may have been in a period with this confusion or where there was this circular way of thinking where she kept telling herself the same story over and over again of like the heart wants what the heart wants it wants this person okay this feminine is taking charge i mean really and truly um and it is kind of a masculine feminine energy so i could definitely see even if you are a masculine pisces that this could definitely be you that i'm talking about and there's no offense, you know, tarot does not really have gender. Um, and we all have masculine and feminine energy within us. And I don't know, you know, um, I don't know why I said all that, but clearly I had to. So um, there's this energy though, of almost an acknowledgement of, you know, looking for the issue that is within us that we can change, that we can alter to bring about change outside ourself. And it seems that this feminine is very focused on any type of limiting belief pattern or any story she's been repeatedly telling herself that seems to be keeping her trapped or keeping her from growing or keeping her from expanding. And with the Ace of Cups, this is, um, it, it can be definitely an energy of self-love, of just giving myself what I need, but it can also be a focus on finding something new. Um, with the tower here and the five of wands, there is a steely determination here to break through anything, any obstacle, to cut it off, to blow it up, to get rid of anything that is keeping this feminine energy from being able to experience what she wants to experience in life. She's definitely taking control right now, um, for sure. All right, and I did get some different cards here um, to use at the end of this reading. Um, they are uh, uh, the Lover's Oracle, because um, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to. So anyway, here we go. For Pisces dealing with a water sign, please, Spirit. All right. Sacred union, honor and treasure your relationship for it is truly sacred. If you are dealing with a fire sign, if you could do anything, what would it be? The answer dwells in your heart, not in your mind, for the heart is the gateway to the soul. If you are dealing with an earth sign, you're getting twin flames, your passion ignites. And if you are dealing with an air sign, you're getting trust. Transformation occurs through acceptance. Once you accept the current situation, it will automatically transform. 
Well, Pisces, I hope this helps. I hope this brought you some peace and clarity. I hope that it gave you some insight into um, what's going on here. If it did, let me know. Keep in mind the angel cards. Today is the last day for you to make comments, to try to, um, to enter into the contest to win the angel cards. I will, I'm just writing down all the names of all the people who have commented on the video. Um, I'm, it will end, um, you can go back to past videos and comment on them if you would like, but um, I'm going to close, I'm going to only take what I get by um, Sunday tomorrow at eight o'clock p.m. and then I will be doing the drawing and posting the winner live, or I mean, I'm sorry, in the community post on Tuesday. All right, so, and then I'll be mailing them out shortly after that as soon as I get your address. So um, just, if you live in the United States and you're a subscriber and you would like to win the angel cards that um, the creator sent me so kindly and so lovely, she's a really lovely person, um, then please, you know, just make a comment that you would like to be entered in, you know, something about angels or the angel cards. On this video, it's your last chance, and like I said, until Sunday at 8 p.m., okay? Eastern Standard Time. All right, until next time, you guys, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Okay, bye-bye.